Hi, I'm Kathy Anderson, Extension Horse Specialist for the University of Nebraska. In today's presentation, I'm going to go over some stuff about care of the newborn foal. So really, you have to think about um, when the foal's first born, those really first few days are really what's very, very important. Um, when it's first delivered, you want to make sure that the foal has a normal cardiac and respiratory ry rhythm. And so there really is an APCAR scoring system that's been modified from that of humans. And it's a good idea if you want to take at least five minutes if you're around when that foal is first born to check its heart rate, respiration rate, um, and muscle tone, and also his nasal stimulation. You can kind of see from the scale that, um, that you can use, it runs from on, on a zero to two basis. If the heart rate is two or, or greater um, than 60, 60 beats per minute, the respiration uh, sh at a two is about 60 breaths per minute, and then the muscles, muscle tone at a two um, it shows that it maintains it, the full uh, sternal recumbency and the navel stimulation is a two if they could cough or sneeze. The normal temperature should be between um, 99 and a half and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And not everybody does these things, but some people might be a little bit concerned if their foal is really very healthy. I'd say probably about over 90% of the time it's really not that much of a concern and folks really don't go and run through all these different kinds of things and just kind of watch and monitor and make sure that that foal seems to be um, good and healthy. One thing that's really very important in this also is if you happen to be there when that foal is born um, is that you really hope that that mare doesn't get up right away and you let them sit there for a fairly significant amount of time so you do have that last passage of blood between the mare and foal because we really don't want to break that cord prematurely. It's important that um, you let the cord basically break naturally and that foal really is getting the last amount of blood that is very critical from that mare. Um, generally what's going to happen is they'll lay there for a period of time and then once that mare gets up it will go ahead and break naturally. You know, it's not a bad idea to kind of check your watch. I did have one mare one time that she was um, had some issues, and so they stayed down for an extreme amount of time, and she had a very difficult time getting up. But this generally is not going to be an issue, and let that go. Go ahead and let that blood get transferred between the two of them. So again, some of these things are if you're there. Not everyone is there when their foals are born, but um, I think especially if they're born in a stall, it really is important that once that cord is broken that you slip in there and you do treat that navel with um, a tincture of iodine, usually two, between 2 and 7%. This is generally something you can get at your local pharmacy. This basically will help sterilize that area and kind of cauterize and help that navel, ear, that navel close. Now something that you might want to watch for over the next few days is to make sure that the navel stump has closed and you don't have any urine dripping from the umbilicus. This is known as a patent urachus. Um, normally they're the, that, that um, umbilicus will close up and this is something that doesn't happen very much, but um, it's something to, to watch. In all the years that I fold out mares, I did have one um, foal that did have this type of issue. And it can be treated by a veterinarian if it doesn't close on its own. Um, they can cauterize it. Sometimes it, do, it does need to have um, surgery done. So it is something to watch for and make sure that that navel um, does close up, gets dry, and those types of things. So, you know, there's a couple things once it's been actually been born that you want to do. And you do want to make sure that he's off to a good start. Um, it's important for that mare and foal to bond with each other and because you want that foal to be you know hooked onto the mare so he'll follow and those types of things. Um, some people do what we call imprint training and that's something you can read up on um, with a foal and it's something that does need to be done very early like within that first 24 hours and it gets them off to a start for you early training later on and so I'd suggest that you research and look at imprint training and decide if that's something that you do want to do because it does need to be done very soon say within the first 24 hours after those foals have been, been born. It includes doing things such as rubbing all over their head, tapping their hooves, um, and perhaps to prepare those foals for some things you're going to do with them and training them or later in life. Now, some people do want to go ahead and give those foals a tetanus antitoxin and some will give them a penicillin. 
I personally think that the tetanus antitoxin is very important. You might visit with your veterinarian and decide what you really do need to do there right away. The tetanus antitoxin will give them immediate protection um, from tetanus and so that's something that, that you might want to consider. But again, it's a good idea to visit with your veterinarian and hopefully they're experienced in pulling out mares on what some of their recommendations are. These are some things that's important if you're around and when that foal does, when that mare is has delivered that foal, that you do check a watch and watch some of these timings because the foal really should stand up within about that first hour after it's been delivered. Yeah, they're going to wobble and they're going to fall up and down, but, but really within that first hour is when they really should be up. And then also they really need to go to nursing um, within those first two to four hours. Um, oxytocin is released from the mare's uh, in response to the nursing and that's going to help her release that placenta and um, it's also very important that that foal gets that early colostrum which is something that we'll also talk about so watch and monitor that and make sure that they are up and nursing within the first 24 hours now you do have to think about and be kind of kind of smart about this nursing thing because some people want to really jump in there and and um, you know work on those foals and get them to nurse it's really important that you get the mare to stand still, that she makes it easy for that foal to nurse. Some of them, especially a maiden mare, might be very nervous and it might be kind of a challenge for them. So sometimes if you just maybe hold on to the mare, make her stand still, and so that foal can get up and go hunting. Generally what we've kind of looked at is as long as that foal is kind of sucking around the general area, you kind of leave them alone. And they might suck on their legs and suck in the general area and you really try to just get that mare to stand still and the most you're going to be able to do is he's kind of doing here is scratch them at their tail head and push them and direct them into the general area. You're not going to be able to hold their head and tell them to nurse. That's not going to happen. And so work with them in some of those kinds of things to help get them over there where they need to nurse so they don't get um, too tired and those types of things. Okay. So we're going to spend a bit of time here talking about the colostrum and also checking that foal's antibodies levels because it really is one of the most important things that you need to do. Now, not everyone's going to check the foal's IgG levels, and I'm not saying that you have to. If you might have some concern, um, it is a smart thing to have a few have a have a test kit on hand, or at least get a hold of your veterinarian that they can come right away if you think you have a problem. Because we'll start with talking about the colostrum. The colostrum really is the first milk that, that, that is released from that mare's udder. Okay? It's going to provide the foal with those necessary antibodies to help protect the foal from various kinds of diseases. It's important to understand that if that milk has been removed from the mare's udder, then it's not going to be replaced. She's only going to have one batch of colostrum per pregnancy. So occasionally you'll have a mare that starts streaming it down her legs before she's foaled. Um, and so it's, if you have that type of situation, it's very important to go collect that colostrum because it might be a day or two before she's actually um, lays down and folds. That doesn't happen very often, but it can, and so it's something to be, be, um, be aware of. Um, so if the foal, the foals really need to have about one to two liters um, of that colostrum and one and a half, or basically one to two liters of that colostrum, and generally they'll get about 250 to 500 cc's at a time. And so it's something to pay attention to. I'd say the majority of mares are going to be just fine. Um, you can get a device called a claustrometer where you would actually analyze it. The claustrum will typically be kind of yellowish and kind of sticky feeling. And so unless you've kind of had an issue, most mares are going to be just fine. So it's not a bad idea to check for failure of passive transfer or check to check for the passive transfer to check the immunoglobin levels in that foal's butt. But I would say not everyone does this. If you have a concern, it's not a bad idea to do this. And really this is just a very simple blood test, blood draw that you can do or have your veterinarian do, but you see that it needs to be done very, very soon after those foals are born. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it really is best if you check it at 8 to 12 hours after they've, they've been born and after they've nursed and then you can see what level of aminoglobins that they have. There are various commercial test kits that you can have and it really is just a simple blood draw. And they're very, there's different ones that you can use but they're very simple and it will tell you what those levels are generally in ranges and we do want them to be in that um, level of 500 um, milligrams per deciliter or above. 
So there, um, there's different kinds of failures, failure of passive transfer, and again, it's not that common, but something that you do have to be aware of. So if the foal has received less than 200 um, levels, 200 IgG, then it is considered a complete failure, um, incomplete failure, okay? If, um, that, if its levels are between 200 and 800 um, immunoglobins, then it's considered uh, to be impartial failure. And if he's above 800, then that's considered no failure and he's just fine. The things to understand and realize is this, it, does, it is very important to get those foals off to a good start. With foals that have complete failure of passive transfer, about 75% of them are gonna become ill. Doesn't mean everyone's gonna die, but you're gonna have some issues and a high percentage of them do become fatally ill. About 25% of the foals are gonna be in partial, um, or 25% of the foals with partial failure are gonna become ill. And um, so, you know, they're kind of in, the, in that middle of the range. And then um, very few are gonna become ill if they have no failure. So we'd really like to get them up above that 800 level. So again, most foals, it's not an issue, but it is something to be aware of. So the thing to understand is that there are, the mares are just going to produce that colostrum once, and the absorbency of the colostrum, colostrum um, is going to be limited after birth. So really, um, you want those antibodies absorbed through the stomach, through the full stomach, through their intestinal epithelium. And the maximum absorption from that is going to be within those first eight hours of birth. So if they ingest it um, normally by suckling, if you put a nasal gastric tube and it goes through the digestive system, okay, then they're going to go absorb it. However, it begins to decline after eight hours, and then actually there's no absorption after 24 hours. And so you can see to get that colostrum with, uh, with, with the antibodies into those folds before eight hours is really what is, is ideal. So if there's failure of passive transfer, you can really treat it a couple ways. And the most preferred method is if you can realize that before they're 12 hours of age, and then you can still give them the oral supplementation. You can bottle feed them, you can use a nasogastric tube, you can use some of those different methods of just having some colostrum on hand that you could go ahead and get it into those foals. And they're really gonna need about 500 mils per hour and get about one and a half to two liters. You can still do it, do help them if it's past 12 hours when you realize this. And again, this is when the intestinal absorption has pretty much gone down significantly. So you're not gonna be able to bottle feed them or put it in a nasal gastric tube because they're gonna to need to get it absorbed in a different manner. So many times this is gonna involve plasma and IV infusion and um, those types of things. Typically they're gonna to want to put give them between 20 and 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, and they, which means they're gonna need between two and four liters overall, which is gonna need generally going to be done IV. Um, so back up just a second, if we're in that early time frame, okay, of before the um, 12 hours, hours um, bottle feeding them, nasal gastric tube, and those types of things are what your options might be. Um, also, if you're in that early time frame, um, you might have some, and fro some frozen colostrum on hand. Um, many folks will go ahead and milk out a mare and have some frozen. You might have some other um, folks in the area that have some frozen colostrum, and it can be stored for a year. You just warm it in warm water, and it's going to be very viable, very good to use. Okay. To move back when we're in that situation, if the foals are more than 12 hours early and you realize that you're in this, this difficult situation, um, you can IV them with equine plasma. It's usually fairly expensive. You're going to need between two and four liters. Um, there's different products are, that are out there. There's a lyphalized IgG. There's some concentrated. There's also some potential oral liquids. And so it's really important if you're in this situation to visit with your veterinarian and kind of come up with a plan what your best, me best method's going to be to get those antibodies into that foal. Because what's going to happen, okay, if the foal doesn't receive um, and is in some type of failure, pass failure of passive transfer, okay, 
Um, it can be caused by a weak or sick foal that didn't nurse enough. Um, maybe it was premature and didn't nurse very much. Maybe the mare didn't have sufficient memory develop, development. She just didn't produce it. And so there's a variety of different kinds of things. Sometimes it's that you lost the mare and, and you didn't have an opportunity to get it. So, um, you know, there's different reasons why this might happen. And it's very important to understand and, and, and uh, understand this and get to a situation where you can use your alternative methods, okay? <clears throat> so to prevent it also is, again, getting the, that claustrum into those foals um, and then evaluating their blood in that early time frame so you can get it to them um, intestinally. So if you don't have it into them that way, um, then again, you're gonna have to do it with um, some type of um, alternative methods. And if I can get this open up, this is a really nice um, infographic that was produced by um, um, a group, and it does a very nice job of summarizing this. Um, so if we look at this as far as um, uh, this failure of passive transfer, as you can see, uh, this kind of just summarizes what I just went through. If you look at the infographic over here, again, we want to have those mares vaccinated four to six weeks before she's due to fall to get those antibodies um, up and sufficient for when that foal, foal does born, okay? So you want to make sure that he's up and nursing, um, and then that within that sh short time frame, if he's nursing, then those uh, antibodies are going to be absorbed um, through the foal's intestinal tract, okay? If it's past eight hours and past this time frame, then we're going to have to do something different. So here's where we need the antibody levels of, um, of where we want them to be, and we really want them to be above 800. Um, for them to achieve it, these are the kinds of things they need um, to like <coughs> um, have everything um, ha that has gone right. And so those are just some things to think about and realize, um, and kind of a nice little summation of some of those types of things. So moving on with some other types of things that to be aware of on those newborn foals is uh, that the meconium is really considered that very first manure that those foals pass. And you can see here in this picture that it really is kind of very hard, um, small dark pellets. They look a little bit more like sheep droppings than our normal horse manure. And it's really thought that these are really just some of that um, uh, fecal material that's been in those, or what this really is, is the fecal material that's been in that foal's digestive system as he's been developing. And so many um, folks will actually go ahead and just give a foal a type of an enema right there in that first few day, few hours that he's been born. And you can purchase just a simple fleet enema, enema that are made for humans. And it's just kind of a soapy water type thing that you can go ahead and give to those foals just basically to help help them pass that meconium. I kind of say help to get the plumbing working. Okay, so some other types of things that you might consider um, and think about, and again, work with your veterinarian are, you know, folks will get in and do different kinds of treatments for those young foals as far as some will give them vitamin injections. Not something that I've ever done, but something that you might hear and, and read up and think about. Um, Think of your, your regular vaccination schedule. Most of them now are going to start them at six months of age on your regular um, vaccinations that we give our adult horses. And remember that they are going to need a, um, an initial and then a booster. And again, working with your veterinarian and making sure that you're doing that, that uh, as correctly as possible we really get those foals off to the best start. So a few little things that I want to bring your attention to. Um, one is some potential problems you might have is neonatal septicemia. It's also called navel ill or joint ill. And I've been around some foals that have had this and so it's something that you want to be aware of. And it is kind of a septic type of thing that can move through that foal's bloodstream and through its organs. And fever, depression, weakness, um, swelling of the different joints is, are things that they can do. So to avoid this, we really stress to doctor those foals' navels, get the iodine on them, and get them closed off. So that's the best thing you can do to avoid, avoid um, this neonatal septicemia, or more commonly known, known as navel ill. Now, you're probably going to run into some diarrhea. This is going to be when they're somewhere to a week to two weeks of age. 
there's different thoughts of this as far as why these young young guys get it. It could be a bacterial infection, parasites, something it's, that it's changes in the mare's hormone, hormones as she comes into that first full heat. Um, but generally about six to 14 days, they're gonna come in what they call a full heat scours. And really it's very, really short lived. And the important thing is that you just watch them and monitor them. Make sure that they still are alert and nursing, um, don't have a fever and things like that, because most of the time, again, they do just fine. You want to make sure that you avoid dehydration with them. Some simple treatments are to just to um, give them in their mouth some Pepto-Bismol, Kaopectate, some of those types of things. They will be getting, you know, scoury stuff on their buttocks, and so to wash that buttocks um, and coat it with kind of just Vaseline, petroleum jelly, and those types of things will help it from scalding their, the hair. <clears throat> Excuse me. If those foals stop nursing, have a fever, it's super watery, then those are times that you might need to be concerned and get your veterinarian to come and make sure that it's not gone on um, to something a little bit more serious. Hernias are something also to watch for. Okay, They can be umbilical hernias, they could be scrotal hernias. As you can see in these pictures, these are umbilical hernias. Many times in horses, they will rectify themselves, and so there's nothing that you really need to do about. So it's something to watch, something to note, and then if they do persist, you might have to have surgery done on, those, on these young guys um, to take care of it. But it's something just to kind of monitor and, mo and monitor. Um, again, it's something that's really not that common. So here as we're getting towards the end, this is not new foal, but just a few things to think about. Um, if you've got these young guys, is, is about a little bit of weaning them, okay? When you're working with the mare, when she's at to that point that you're going to wean her, you need to think about how you're going to help her reduce her milk production. And the biggest one from that is you're going to remove her from her any kind of grain, allow her to excess, and so she can help to dry up, allow her to exercise so you can help her to dry up. So having her turned out, letting her move around, because horses can get um, mastitis, it doesn't happen very often, but it is something that could happen, and so you want to help them dry up as best you can. Kind of when you're going to wean is a lot of what's going to just depend up on, on you and your system and your program um, and what works. Most of the time it's going to be somewhere between that four and six months of age is when most folks are going to go ahead and wean their foals. Um, some methods um, that people will use and you need to kind of think ahead and plan on this is that you want to minimize the trauma and keep everybody healthy and safe. And so some folks will, if they've got a barn, will go ahead as you see this situation here where they'll put the foal in the stall and put the mare in the stall next to that foal for a few days before they actually do go ahead and take that foal away. And this will kind of minimize the stress just a little bit, but you don't want, they can maybe see and touch each other, but he's not going to be able to nurse. It's also been good that on these foals you're getting close to weaning that you have had them access to some grain um, as you're preparing them to be weaned. Sometimes if you've got two foals and they're pretty quiet and docile, you can put the two foals in the stall together and put the mares on the outside from them. You have to be very, very careful about how you do this if they don't go to fighting each other, and so it's something to think about. Now, some folks have talked about leaving the foal in the herd and removing the mare. Um, that's one that I've really never done and I would want to be pretty careful about that and make sure that you do have really good fences and stuff because you might think that these two really don't care about each other and as soon as that mare leaves that foal is going to turn and be very very upset. Okay so now what I want to do is um, within this presentation I'm going to go ahead and put in um, a short video so you, that we have done as far as um, taking in and um, handling these young foals. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and let this video play so you get some good tips about handling young foals. In this short video, we want to give you some tips about handle, how to handle a newborn foal. Uh, some things that you really need to be kind of careful about and pay attention to and so hopefully we give you some insight of how to handle one when they're just a few days old. Now the baby we're going to show you on this little video, she's only about three days old and yes if you look at the stall that we have her in, um, right now it is bedded with shavings. It really is preferable when you do have these mares into full, if you do full them inside, to have that, bed, that the stall bedded with, with straw. 
straw is going to be a lot cleaner and a lot better for those for those mares as they're going through the folding process and so that's kind of how we want to have the stalls bedded so in this little short video we're going to show you some things about handling the baby um, getting the baby and the mare out of the stall the first time and hopefully just give you some safe ways to work with the both of them now when you first go to handle these newborn foals you have to understand and realize that they're not halter broke and so you need to, to be sensible and do some safe things about handling them I will say that this baby is extremely quiet, extremely easy to work with, and don't think they're all going to be as, as easy to get along with as what she is. But you can see what we're going to do is go ahead and put one hand and cradle them in front of their neck, and then the other hand we're going to go back by their buttocks and usually go ahead and take a hold of their tail. And with that, you can do a lot to move them where you need. Um, also, it's really good in the early training programs of these young guys to get in here and handle them and work with them as, easy, as early as you can to get them used to being handled and rubbed on and things like that. You might also hear of a process or another theory that people will do called um, imprint training, and that's something that you can look and research more about. This is not really truly imprint training because that's normally done within the first 24 hours. But here we're just, um, after this baby's about just a few days old, getting in here and rubbing on them and holding on them. Um, if, he need, if we need to do any treatments on this foal at this stage, it's too young to put a halter on and so he's going to hold the baby and um, cradle her and move around her and then we could give her a vaccination um, to give her an injection, draw blood on her and any of those types of things as we might need. All right, some more things about handling these babies. Really pay attention to them. The other thing is they're not going to be overly receptive to this. So what you have to remember is just kind of hang on to them. Just kind of go with them and see she's showing a little bit of resistance here. You want This is some of your very first early train on these guys, and so you want to make sure that you do go ahead and hold on to them. Um, pull them to you, keep them um, around you, and so that you from the very beginning are the boss. You don't want to get in a super big battle or overly aggressive with them. You certainly don't want to injure them and keep it all positive. And so we'll make sure that that baby's doing what we want her to do and then back off um, and be friendly to them. The other thing is they like that they like you to be about eye level or on the same size with you. So what you'll see is he's going to creep down so he's not as imposing, so he's more about the same size of that baby. The other areas that a foal really likes to be scratched is they're up at their withers and then also at their tail head. And if you watch even adult horses out, they will scratch each other at their tail head and up at their withers. Um, and those are really comfort zones and areas of, of really um, positive kind of interaction with them. It's good to go ahead and pet this baby on her face, on her head, on her ears, but really that initial contact, if you, if you bend down and go in and approach him at their shoulder, you're going to get them, and you can see that she's kind of interested in him and looking at him, and you can even back away, and so many times they'll go ahead and follow and come to you. The other thing you want to be careful as you're handling them is watch your feet because they will kick out, they will step on you. So make sure that you've got closed shoes, preferably boots on, when you go to handling these young guys so you don't get yourself hurt um, and you can stay with them and work with them and handle them in the right way. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and put a halter on this little bit, this little um, filly. Now remember, I did say she is extremely quiet. They're not all going to be take things quite as well as what she has here. And she has had one on um, once or twice already. And so just kind of work with them. Just be pretty um, careful with them and pay attention. They're not all going to stand there quite as nicely as what this filly did. And sometimes you just need to put them on and let them shake their head and play with it and get used to just having that halter on. It's really nice if you have the time and the facility to go ahead and start putting a halter on them when they're this little. If you wait till they're six, eight months of age, you can tell that they're going to be a lot bigger and a lot diff more difficult to handle. Um, we're not, you don't want to ramrod them. You want to just more or less kind of pull them to you and push them ahead and get them to move and give to pressure of that halter, but do it in a very kind of subtle and quiet way so that baby does learn to, he's not really going to snap her around. He's just going to hold her head over here and get her convinced to go ahead and come over to him like she just did right there. So if we take this baby and we would just pull hard on her head, okay, that's when oftentimes that they'll go ahead and get in the fight with you. They might flip over. 
Um, I've even known in babies at this stage, if you flip them over, you can break a neck, and so which is never good. And so instead of getting a fight with her and really doing a really push type thing, he's more or less going to move her hip over and pull her so she does come around and send her more forward and pull her around into the circle around him so it's always a give and take type of thing. And you move him off center just a little bit, but here he's going to push on her hip, send her forward, and then around so she does come to him. Remember, you want to do it both directions, so he first did it to the left, and now um, he's going to ask her to come. He's going to push on her hip and send her forward a little bit, and then come around to him. All right? And remember, she's only about three days old, and if you've, like I said before, have the time and abilities to go ahead and do some of this when they're very young like this, that really is to your advantage because they're smaller, they're a little bit easier to handle than when they're six or eight months of age. Now you need to think about um, some of your safety and a little, bit of the know a little bit of the behavior and nature of these newborn foals when you first take them out of the stall. The ideal is that we have the, the foal that's going to follow that mare. You have to realize here within probably about the first week of that foal's life, their eyesight is not 100%. So don't assume they're going to magically just walk out of the stall and follow that mare very simply because they've not been outside. If you by chance have a mare that falls out on pasture, that's a little bit different situation because they're already going to be out there in the open together. But when you're falling in a stall situation, you need to probably have two people with you when you initially take that mare and fall out of the stall to make sure they come out correctly. Some things to think about too is because that baby can't really see, he doesn't really know what's going on. If the mare and foal do get separated, um, the baby's going to panic. Sometimes they run off because they can't see. So sometimes what the handler can do is go ahead and do that little, the whinnying that you might hear us do when that, um, and because the foal can hear, he's just not going to see very well. So that's a little bit of a comforting thing to those foals and it also does help them know where that mare actually is. And he's going to cradle her and bring her right along the mare um, as we go out to the indoor arena. Um, it's nice if you have a small enclosure like what we have here so we can initially put that mare and foal out together by themselves so then the foal can go ahead and learn how to follow that mare in a small area. So after we've had this baby and mare, well, the, the baby will follow, its, uh, follow the mare and we've had the halter on a little bit here in the stall so she's kind of giving the pressure and, and working with us a little bit and also knowing the demeanor of the baby like this one that she's so quiet, we'll go ahead and start leading him to the pasture, leading him as we turn them out for a couple of days to get some of that initial halter breaking done. Uh, what you will find is if you can get a halter on one, it's very handy. Some of these guys get pretty independent pretty fast and they don't follow the mare as well or they kind of get distracted and run off a little bit and that's always a very nervous situation both for the baby and for the mare. And so by having two people and having, and actually as they get a little bit more broke, you can even have one person um, holding the mare and holding the baby and moving them from the, from, the, um, from the stall to wherever you might be going to turn them out. But remember, they're not really completely halter broken, so you have to be careful with them. It's always a, kind of a give and take type thing. Um, they're easily hurt and injured if you kind of get a little bit too aggressive with them, and so always pay attention and be careful and, and, and think about some of those types of things. You'll notice that this baby does have a nylon halter on, and here as we're going to have it out just for a little bit, we might leave the nylon halter on. However, it's not really recommended that you leave a nylon type halter when you turn these horses out. Uh, what you're going to find is they do not break and so if it would get hung on something or whatever the outcome probably is not going to be very positive. There are some operations, some large farms that do put halters on their babies right away and leave them on but if you really watch and notice those are going to be leather halters because a leather halter, halter will break if they get hung on a fence or something um, the halter is going to break and hopefully the baby won't, won't break itself and so that's something to be aware of and just because we have a nylon one on this one right now as we're kind of getting it started and taking it out is not what we would leave on this baby say if we went to, to leave it turned out for any amount of time. So we're going to go ahead and take this pair out now that we've got had the halter on the baby a little bit. He's going to go ahead and work with her so she does follow the mare but kind of learns to respect the halter um, and, and put the two together. So he's going to kind of just work with the baby and she's got a natural go mechanism because she's wanting to follow the mare and he'll push her at her hip a little bit um, and work with her. Again, knowing that she's not completely halter broke, 
So he's just going to be a give and take and kind of work with her, getting her to follow the mare, kind of learn some of the halter pressure and those types of things as we put the two together. I'll remind you, it is much easier to do this when that they're at this age and this size than when they're four, five, six months of age. And once we've done this at this early stage, it's going to be there with that foal. And so you might not even have a halter and lead it for another month or so, but it's going to be there. And so the next time you do um, halter them and try to lead them, it's going to go much easier than if it would be the very first time. So what we've shown you is some different things as far as handling this baby when it's relatively new, just a few days old, and also a little bit about putting a halter on them early, early on, and then getting the, them to lead behind the mare. So what you can also see is once we've had them out in a smaller enclosure, then put them out in a little bit bigger area, you can see that that mare and foal pretty much follow each other around, and they've pretty much done the good bonding thing that you want them to have, and the foal is going to be bonded to the mare and follow the mare around. So now after a day or two of this, then we're perfectly fine to go ahead and turn them out into a much bigger enclosure, a bigger pasture, even if there's other mares and foals around because these two have bonded together.